Hey everybody, welcome back. It's January 2020 and I just returned from a successful late season archery mule deer hunt. I hunted really hard for four days with my brothers and on day four, I shot a really young buck, a meat buck at 60 yards. He's super tender and although he's just a meat buck, it's my first archery harvest, so I'm super proud of him. While I was away on that hunt, the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish released the 2020 and 2021 uh, big game uh, hunt proclamation. And it reminded me that we had received a couple of uh, video requests recently on hunting. And one of them was, how does someone who has never hunted before get into hunting? That was one video and that's what I'm gonna cover today. I'm gonna cover that in this video. And the second request was for like a, a strategy video, if you will, on how to increase your draw odds in New Mexico. So I'm not gonna cover that today. I'm gonna cover that in the next video, but today we are gonna talk about how to get into this sport. I appreciate this question myself on a very personal level because in my family, hunting died when my grandfather died. And that was, I was still a boy, you know, and, and even in my lifetime, he had never, he hadn't hunted. He was, he was old and he was sick and nobody else in the family uh, of his children and, and grandchildren and all that were really ever into it. So I grew up without hunting. We fished a lot. My dad took me fishing all the time, but I, hunting to me was, I never did it. I just never had that opportunity in my family growing up. So for me, this, this question was uh, definitely something that I, I wanted to answer because my own journey in this has been challenging to say the least, right? So let me share, I have my laptop here today because I don't want to miss, I've, I've, writ, wrote, I've uh, written some things that I don't want to forget to talk about. So you're going to see me looking at this and talking with you at the same time. But first of all, I guess my question for you would be, if you're trying to get into hunting is where do you live, right? Where do you live and what opportunities exist in your home state? So here in New Mexico, um, we have a lot of opportunity. Right, We are a state that has, I believe, 51% of our state is public land. And we have an enormous variety of species um, available to us. So there's opportunity here, you know. If you live in Texas, where only 4% of the state is public land, and you don't know a buddy or you don't have a friend that's willing to let you go onto their property and hunt whitetail, um, then you're going to be left buying a lease. You're going to be left buying private tags or traveling to other states that do offer uh, public land hunting. So I think that first question, you know, is, is important. It's where do you live? Where do you find yourself as you're in this video? Where, what's your state of residence? And what are the opportunities in that state? And again, I kind of already mentioned it, but how much public land um, is accessible in your, in your state of residence? And that is enormous, I think, for the public lands hunter because public lands hunts, the tags and licenses for those hunts are typically extremely cheaper than if you're going to go spend money on a lease or buy a tag from a, a private landowner. Okay, so you want to think about what's your state of residence and how much public land do you have. The other thing is what species exist in your home state and on that land um, is it mainly deer? Is it, is it elk? Is it a variety? Of, or do you live in the Rocky Mountains? Do you live on the West Coast? Do you live on the East Coast? You know, all that is going to really determine what's available to you right now, right? Sure, if you have the money, you can fly to New Zealand and hunt stags on this coming Saturday, you know, whatever, this coming month. And then two months later, you can go up to British Columbia and hunt caribou, you know. But the reality is most of us don't have that large of a budget to be doing things like that. So we're really trying to find those opportunities that exist closest to us that are economic, but still are gonna give us a good chance of harvesting an animal. Another thing to consider with regards to your home state is, is there a lottery? In New Mexico, we have a lottery system. And so what happens is in March, usually in March, the deadline to apply for a hunt uh, for a deer hunt, an elk hunt, any big game species is usually in March. And you basically, in short, you throw your name into a hat and they do a random drawing. And if your name gets picked out of the hat, you get to hunt. And if it doesn't, then you don't. 
So that's how New Mexico works. We don't have a preference point system like Colorado. Colorado allows you to build preference points over the years. So every year you don't draw, you get a preference point. And the more preference points you get, the higher your chances are of drawing a tag as you, as you progress, as you uh, go through the years gaining points, preference points, preference points. But New Mexico doesn't do that. Some people like that, some people don't. You know, it's pretty much anybody's game every year because we don't have preference points. So you can have someone drawing, you know, a really good elk tag three, four years in a row, and then you'll talk to another hunter who hasn't drawn an elk tag in eight, nine years in New Mexico. So it can be frustrating, but that's something to think about in your home state. What kind of system do they have in place for hunting? Is it over the counter? Are there so many deer in your home state that it's just like, you know, you get you know, two bucks and eight does over the counter, you can go and just harvest animals? Or is it like New Mexico where everything is limited and really there's only a couple of over the counter hunts available? Deer are probably the most, the easiest tag to draw. They're the easiest tag to get a hold of. Even if you want to pay some money, that's, that's a pretty cheap route to go. That's going to be your cheaper tag, right? If you want to buy a private land, private landowner's tag for elk, you're looking at thousands of dollars. You know, you're looking probably at a minimum of two, 3,000, and I've seen elk tags go as high as $15,000 uh, for some of the more um, pr proud private landowners. And so, you know, it can get really expensive to buy a private tag, so keep that in mind. And that actually leads me right into the other thing you need to consider when you're getting into hunting is the investment. I have this gear here, uh, not just, you know, to look cooler so that it's a it's a nice show and tell it has nothing to do with that this is what i actually used on my archery hunt that i was just on um, it was an archery hunt so i had my bow i had a range finder i had a gps they make apps for that now you can use your phone and and i had some binos right so you look at that this is four items you know but we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars right here, you know, on this table um, that I've invested into my hunting gear, you know. And so the investment for me as I was getting into hunting was definitely uh, shocking, to say the least. I mean, every hobby can be expensive, right? I mean, whether you, you ride bikes, you know, you're a motorcycle, you like your motorcycle enthusiast or, um, you know, you're a fly fisherman, fly fisherwoman. Um, it can get as expensive as you want. And hunting, for me, has been, without a doubt, the most expensive passion in my life, I think. <laughs> Maybe aside from video, film, you know, doing film and stuff like that. But, you know, for example, this bow here, um, I built this bow. So when I say that, you know, I, I, I bought the frame and then I had to buy my sight separate. I had to buy my arrow rest separate, my stabilizer, you know, and then of course I bought, um, you have to buy arrows and when you're actually hunting, you need broadheads. So, you know, really just in this bow setup right here, you're talking over $2,000, you know, and some people might look at, look at that and think that's just way too much money, you know, but it all depends. It depends on what your budget is. It depends on how, um, how you want to spend your money in this sport. Do you need a $2,000 setup to hunt? No, you don't. You don't. Um, it's just like fishing. Do you need a $1,000 rod to catch fish? Absolutely not. You can do very well on, you know, a setup. My first bow setup was like 350 bucks, and it came with everything. It came with a sight. It came with my arrow rest. It came with a little stabilizer. So, there are setups that exist that come in combos, you know, and just like rifles, you know, same thing. Are you hunt, going to be hunting rifle? You know, this is all in the investment, right? So if you don't have a rifle, well, then you're going to have to buy one. And yeah, you can hunt with a super cheap rifle and probably do okay in the closer ranges. But, you know, eventually, if you really get into the sport, you probably are going to spend a little more money on a, on a more high grade, you know, weapon. So the investment in hunting is definitely something that you want to consider. And, and here's the way I've done it. When I first put in, uh, what I did was I said, okay, I'm going to hunt deer. That's my only tag. Because if I draw five hunts, I can't afford to go on them anyway. 
um, that was where I was at that point in my life. You know, I could, I could afford a mule deer hunt and that was it. I, mean, I couldn't afford anything else. So I put in for a mule deer hunt and, and I told myself, if I draw the hunt, I'll buy a rifle, you know? And so if I didn't draw, then what do I need a rifle for, right? So I drew and then I bought my rifle. And that year, that's all I had, you know? Um, I had my rifle and that was my weapon. I didn't have binoculars. Um, I didn't have a GPS. I didn't have a range finder. I didn't have any of these, you know, these things that really now I look at as a necessity. Uh, back then, call it ignorance, but also at the same time, lack of budget. I just didn't have the money to spend, you know, thousands of dollars on a mule deer hunt. So what I have done is over the years, each year I buy something, I accumulate, I plan on saying, okay, this year um, I need optics. This year I need a GPS. This year I need a wall tent. And every year I've accumulated. And I'm sure this is the way every hunter has done it. Unless he's, unless like, like I said, you have money coming, falling out of the sky, you know. But for me, that wasn't the case and I had to accumulate things year by year. So now, you know, my, I first put in for a hunt in 2010 and I drew that, that was a mule deer hunt. And since then, you know, over the last 10 years, I've accumulated almost everything that I, that I need and even want for my hunting, um, my hunting adventures. But it's taken time. So don't feel bad about that. You know, it is gonna take time, it's an investment. The gear alone, is, it's an investment. The tags are usually the cheap part of your hunt. You know, it's, it's not the tag, it's, it's the gear and it's your weapon and it's the, uh, the travel can sometimes be expensive and stuff like that. Camping gear, do you at least have a tent, you know, that, that'll keep you warm? Um, I know, and I've done it myself, uh, you know, I've, I've hunted in, in the winter and slept in a tent. And if you have the right sleeping bags and you have um, things to keep you warm and you know how to stay warm, you're fine. You know, you can do that. Uh, consider travel costs, like I said, licenses, licenses and tag fees. Resident fees are typically very low. So, for example, in New Mexico, up right now, a mule deer tag costs $41. And an elk tag for a resident is 90 bucks, $91 or something. And that's for a mature bull. For a non-resident, it's somewhere, it's like over 500 bucks, you know, to come and hunt New Mexico, maybe more, you know, for elk. So the resident fees are, are good. And that's a good place for you to start. Like I said, in your home state, look at those resident fees and, and start there. And if you have a bigger budget, yeah, put in for elk in Idaho and Colorado and Montana and Wyoming, you know, and you have the time to travel, you know, by all means. I mean, that's awesome. And really my last question in all this, you know, not to get philosophical, is just, but, but more like, why do you, why do you want to hunt? Motive is a huge thing for me in my hunting adventures because it'll help you follow through. If you don't have the right motive, when you get out on a really tough hunt um, and it gets hard, it's, it's hard not to want to just quit, you know, and I'll be perfectly honest, you know, I get to that point probably in every hunt. But I remember why I'm out there. So you push through, you know, based on that motive. And for me, you know, like I said, my grandfather passed away. And when he did, hunting pretty much faded in my family. Now that I've been hunting, now my brothers are hunting and my dad's putting in and my baby sister's putting in. And, and so, you know, it's reviving that tradition that was in my family. And, you know, of course, the meat is that's like, oh my gosh, like that's probably the main reason I go is for the meat. The meat is incredible. This little buck that I just shot, super, super tender. He tastes awesome. My kids love this organic game meat. So yes, your hunting career, so to speak, um, it could be long, it could be challenging, but for me, it has been so worth it. You know, it's taking me years to get to where I am now uh, when it comes to gear and, and successfully harvesting animals and knowing areas and stuff like that but it's it's part of the adventure and to me it's absolutely worth it so my last question for you is what are you waiting for just go for it it's a blast you'll have a good time be safe remember follow all regulations and laws and you'll be just fine um, so thanks for watching this video again remember next time we're going to talk about how to increase your odds in the new mexico draw uh, specifically new mexico draw that's where i live and, and that's what i'm going to focus on so be sure to subscribe if you haven't, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.